In this video, we're going to cover the tabs up top. You'll notice we have architecture, structure, and all these different tabs. Depending on the version of Revit that you're running, you may have different tabs. For instance, if you're running Revit 2013 or Revit 2014, the full version with all the, all the pieces, you'll see one in here that actually says Systems. Um, so you have, may have a little bit different from here. Also, I have one that says Bentley. That's I've, I've added some plugins. Uh, and you'll also see one called Add-ins. Revit now has the ability to add in what are called uh, add-ins or plugins or apps. Uh, they call it the Exchange app, uh, Exchange apps, where you can actually load in little add-ons to do things in Revit. Uh, as we go through the training, I'll introduce a few of those to you. But now, as we if we move across the tabs here, you'll see there's lots of stuff uh, as we move through it. Uh, most of the time, we'll be most likely working on the Architecture tab. But as we go through, you may start to move fast and this little video is going to cover some of the things that get screwed up with the tabs. I'd like you to double click on architecture uh, and you'll notice that if you're on the architecture tab and you double clicked on it you look up and you, all your buttons have changed. What has happened is it has reduced to what they call panels these little panel buttons now you're like whoa! If you double click on architecture again it's then going to go down to just these little like mini buttons. You double click on it again they totally disappear at this point, panic sets in, double click one more time, and they cycle back through again, and you'll see them reappear. Uh, that's, not, um, that's not a glitch. It's actually built that way, um, just so you understand. That's actually a Windows aspect. Uh, it's not part of, more of Revit, it's more Windows. Now, if you start to move on over all the way to the right, you'll notice there's a funny little graphic in this area over here. I'll ping it a couple of times. This is what drives it. If you drop this down, it says cycle through all. That's what it's set to. So if I double click on a tab, it's going to cycle through them. Minimize the tabs, minimize the panels, minimize the panel buttons. So you have the ability to tell it what you want to do. Okay, The only one it's missing is do nothing. I wish they had one, but they don't. Do nothing. If I double click on here, do nothing. Just leave it as it is. Okay. So uh, you pick the one that works best for you. And now when I double click on it, it's either going to go full screen or tabs. So that's why we change it. Now here's the one that gets people all the time. It's a very subtle thing. And um, periodically when I'm doing training, I'll go over to the desktop and then all the, the, the menus are all screwed up. If I click on the word architecture, click, hold, and try to drag it, it doesn't move. But if I hold the control key down, click, hold, I can actually move the tabs around. Now, why am I telling you this? Because you're going to move one accidentally and you're going to look up there and architecture is going to be out of whack. And it will drive you bananas because you're so used to going certain places. How do you get it back? So the trick is hold the control key down, click on the tab, and slide it. You can put it back where you want it to be. That is one of the biggest problems I get phone calls about. Uh, well, one of them, people like, mm, one of my tabs move. How do I put it back? Uh, it's just a, you hold the control key down. So I'll pause and let you guys try a few, uh, a few of those little tidbits there. Uh, the next tab we're going to look at is this one here. Uh, this is called the quick, um, uh, the quick, now, geez, I can't remember what they call it now. It's a... Uh, Quick access or the uh, quick access toolbar. Yeah, there it is. Um, it normally sits up top, but notice I, I run out of real estate. You can drop, bring it down or move it up. If I right click, you'll see it says remove from quick access bar, which is that button. But here's the one show access bar above the ribbon. This is where it is by default, and you may have seen this in AutoCAD and other applications. But notice you've run out of space here. You see how we get five or six little commands or ten commands and it runs out of space. If I right click, I can say show below the ribbon. So it moves down here. Notice I have a lot more real estate. And if you have a bigger screen, then you have a lot more real estate. And you're thinking, so what does this do for me? Well, one of the problems with the tabs is if I'm on the architecture tab and I want to do something, let's say, like annotation, let's say I want to put a dimension in. I've got to go to annotate, click, wait for it to cycle through, and then go to align, which can be a pain. What we can do is add our own shortcuts along here, or our buttons. You'll see there's the aligned one. To add one is quite easy. Right click on any button and go ahead and give this a try. Right click on, let's say, mullions. Add to quick access toolbar. Perp, pops it right in. Curtain grid. Right click. Add to quick access toolbar. So you say, well, you know, I do a lot of, let's say, rooms. Yeah. Right click. Add to quick access toolbar. Room separate lines. Okay. Room tags. You can pop them all in here so you know what they are and you don't have to look for them. Now, no matter what tab you're on, you're on massing in sight and you got to put a room tag in. There it is. Now, this is uh, fully customizable. If you right click, you also have the ability to customize the access toolbar. And you can move them up and down. 
if I go down to the bottom, you say, well, I want all my little rooms to be in their own little group. Put a separator in. I'll then move that separator, uh, move that down so the separator goes up. And you can play with these little buttons to make it happen. Yeah, so you, if you use, for instance, like the modify tab, instead of going up there all the time. Now, the repeat we talked about a moment ago, in Revit, if I like the align command, I may right click and add it to the quick access toolbar. Or if you like certain commands, you'll notice it says align al. That's not its, yeah. Okay, that's not its name. Uh, it's actually called al is the um, is this keyboard shortcut, right? Um, you can also customize your keyboard shortcuts if you want. Now, you'll notice what happened here on my screen. Um, if you don't have the latest, let's say, flash player, or if the flash player starts to squirrel out on you, you'll notice that the little shortcuts or the videos that come up and play sometimes lay up on your screen. You don't have to close out of Revit. Hit Control Alt Delete, and you'll notice what happens is we go to Task Manager, and inside of here you'll see all these little s weird numbered ones with the little boxes next to it. That's it. If I click on that, you right click and you go to uh, end that task and task and each time I was hitting it, it it started the new ones that's why I have three of them and task and now when I go back to my desktop you'll see it's gone so you don't have to quit out of Revit videos don't work on the quick no they work it's just uh, certain machines I updated the flash player on this machine and uh, just two weeks ago and since then I've had some squirreliness uh, with this machine so I have to have to I have a feeling I just need to upgrade my, uh, update my video driver and I should be fine. So uh, just to recap here, uh, that little toolbar, you can add as much as you want to it. Uh, then you can then even take out or uncheck whatever you want to remove here. So for instance, I know this sounds crazy, but on large projects, I have a tendency to go click on the default 3D view. And what it does, it takes a minute to regenerate. So on one large project I was working on, I actually took it off. I came over here and said, uh, take that off so it's not there so I wouldn't accidentally click it uh, so yeah you can play with this and adjust, em, adjust, em, adjust it to fit your needs even on a daily basis once you put those tools there you can then go remove them uh, one other tidbit about the desktop being that we're moving some things around here is I want to mention this down here press and drag uh, turn that off uh, that will get you in trouble what it does is when it's on it works more like Photoshop if I if I hover over this wall and I think I'm gonna do a crossing right that's how AutoCAD people usually are comfortable. What happens is if I click on that wall and I start to do a crossing, I think I'm doing a crossing, but notice I just moved that wall. And uh, I'm like, whoa, what just happened? Well, I just moved that wall by accident. If you turn this off, I'm going to hit undo. <coughs> if this is turned off, and I click and over it and I do a crossing, see it does a crossing because that's what I'm expecting. I'm an AutoCAD person. I've been using it for years, right? I'm not expecting the press and drag. So my recommendation is turn that off on your machines because you won't get weird results. I have people call me with floors moving and walls. How come this stuff just moves on its own? Well, chances are they're trying to do a crossing and they just grab something and slit it. So uh, you, you want to be, be careful with that there. Okay, so that's a um, little insight on these little bars up top and this one here.